Well, hello there. Welcome to part two of our Valentine's Day conversation. Um, last week, we spoke a little bit about, you know, how you can have Valentine's Day on a budget, even if you're celibate as a single person or as a couple. And this week, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use the Valentine season to mend a broken relationship. Stay tuned. A lot of us don't apologize. I feel like people throw the word sorry around because they feel they have to say sorry. But people hardly ever these days genuinely apologize to their partner. And then you made another important point which I want to sort of hammer on. The first step, yeah, I mean, even before the apology, is understanding that there's something wrong that needs to be corrected. And then making a conscious decision to make that correction or to yeah. correct the situation. Not being stubborn. Exactly. And not so sort of rushing it That's the right. Line. And we do that too much. In our relationships, you, sometimes you don't want to have an argument. Yeah, or you stubborn. Yes. You want to be right all the time. That's right. Or you feel that, you know, Charlie, he's not going to give me my pocket money if I'm mean to him. So let me just be, be quiet. And, really? and, and yeah, people do that a lot. Oh, wow. People do that a lot. You know, so they're not having conversations. I've, I've been to homes where the guy is sleeping in another room and the woman is sleeping in one. It has nothing to do with it being a cultural thing. They've just literally decided that they can't share a bed anymore. You know, and it started out something as simple as you didn't ground the pepper in the apotoriwa and the sanka. You did it in the blender. Small things, the little things, things. The little things always turn into things. such a big issue. When little things happen, always address the issue. Yes. Yeah, I'm because really grateful because my, my boyfriend was sitting down for six hours. We've actually done a five hour conversation. Five he doesn't hours. live in Ghana. <laughs> five hours. We, yeah, we were on WhatsApp chat for five hours trying to sort out an issue. Obviously, it would go quiet at some point, but five hours, yeah. Kudos wow. to you guys. <laughs> Kudos to you guys. Uh, no, no, but it's, pillow, a, but it's, a, <laughs> no, it's important because <laughs> there's never a right time to talk to your partner about issues that you have. That's true. You see, and it's the small things that cause these issues. Yes, because when it comes to someone you love or someone you care about, there's certain things you don't expect them to do. You can take it from anybody, from your parents, from your siblings, from your uncle, your auntie. Or, when it's them. Yes, because you, you're like, why you? Why you? That's right. You know, we expect so much from our partners. too much pressure on our partners. Definitely, definitely. And so that, that would bring me to our, our next point, where um, I would say that we shouldn't put too much pressure on our partners. We shouldn't be too hard on our partners or on ourselves when things go wrong in a relationship. We're human. Yes, your partner may be a superwoman, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> or you're a superman, but yeah. they're human. Nonetheless, there's still woman and man in that phrase. You will make mistakes. So understand that your partner is human and that your partner will make mistakes and that sometimes those mistakes will affect you and then be ready to address them when they when they come about and it's okay to give yourself that sort of that space i think we hold our partners in such high esteem i know to me my man can do no wrong he's the best thing that ever happened to me so if he ever makes a mistake it's like dude like why you you should have known better so i think whenever whenever bad things happen then even if you're on the receiving end of that bad thing, you should understand that your reaction is natural and it's only normal and allow yourself the time to be upset and then address the issue because you don't want it to sort of boil up and then blow over and then they ask you, oh, how are you doing today? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's very important. Yeah. Another thing that I would say is, this is the season of romance and hearts and love and everything nice and spicy. Go out for lunch. Go out for dinner and have a conversation. Apologize first. Yeah, I, 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 yes, no, the apology is, is very important. So do that first. But I feel like people feel that when you're angry, there's no way that romance can come out of that situation. You know? now, if you're a married couple, the, if your counselor was honest with you, or if you listen to the right people, they will tell you that on Saturday, for example, at Keeping Love Alive, um, last Saturday, it was two Saturdays ago, Dr. Hopson, who is like our resident psychologist, he said that sex 
is great for mending broken relationships. And for yes, and for correcting disputes. But the issue will still be there. Yes. So you so you talk in bed, you go out for dinner, have the romantic dinner and then come back and, you know, sort of mend it all up. But the important thing is to apologize and then to talk about it. Second image international admissions in progress. Courses available include hairdressing, beauty therapy and fashion. Call us 1024-331-999. Evening and weekend classes are also available. Don't use sex, and that's the next point, to mask it. A lot of people also do talk that. talk and then have the sex yes. when you're married. Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you're married. When you're married. I mean, no judgment, no judgment, but no judgment. Oh well, you know. But, but what else would you say people can do? Um, aside from apologizing, I think, especially with guys, I think guys need to understand that when you've hurt a woman, you need, this is my personal opinion, I feel like you need to allow her to punish you just a little bit. <laughs> I love to punish you because with me, yeah, I could forgive you, but I still want to trim myself a little bit. I still want to, you know, if you ask me how I am, I still want to be like, oh, Because your pride was wounded. Just allow her. I, I know that she's not going to give in right away and give her that, that time to be a bit of a brat. Let her get it out because, I mean, you messed up. So allow her to... Obviously, she shouldn't treat you like dirt, but allow her that period of time where, you know, she's trying herself, you know she's forgiving you, you know you're going to get back together, but just allow her that period and don't be needy and don't over shower her with affection, but be there. If she wants to, you know, treat you badly, still be there, still sit there, still listen to her if she's having a man. Just sit there and let her know that you're going to be there regardless of how mad she is, so that you can prove to her how much you still want it. I think that's a very important thing to, to note because a lot of the time when you've had a car with your partner you're going through a very difficult time you tend to start thinking whether he's going to leave you whether you should leave whether he's a person so doing something like that just reinforces the, the fact that he wants to be with yeah, you and if he leaves you're like um you're the one who messed up yeah. why are you breaking yeah. up with me yeah. and i think it, it, it would work the other way too Men, when they're hurt, they're really hurt. I mean, women, we, we take a lot from men, but men, when they're hurt, they're really hurt. And, and, and I don't think it's the time for you as a woman to start, you know, tossing your shoulders and your hair about. No, be very sorry. Make the apology. Have the conversation. And then be there. Just be there. I think it's really important. Be there to accept that that comes And I think another great way is, um, you have to be the bigger person. There always has to be a fool in a relationship. If he's not willing to talk, not if she's not willing to talk, no, not the same fool all the time. Not the same fool all the time. I mean, there's a difference between being taken for granted and being treat, um, treated like a doormat, and then just knowing that this is something that we're going through. I'm ready to talk, you're not, but I'd like to take the high road and kickstart the conversation. There's a difference. I'm talking about the second one, where we're going through something, I'm ready to talk, you're not, so let me kickstart the conversation. But if you are that person who's ready to start the conversation at that point in time, there's nothing wrong with, you know, for example, getting a movie that will speak on your behalf. You know, so get a nice movie that depicts the same or a similar situation that you're going through together and watch it together. But I think it's also important for the hurt party to partake in the apology process yes. so if i'm extending an olive branch and i'm trying to make things right with my partner i expect him to also sort of take part not that i've got in a movie i'm like exactly. oh babe do you want to watch this movie with me I'm like, no 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 i want to go to bed i'm like <laughs> <laughs> you know meanwhile you know or at least you have some hints over the, the last few days or the last few weeks or months even that you did something to hurt the person mm -hmm. no that, that, that's not fair yeah that's not fair. If, even even if you're not you know you're not the one who, who messed up even if it's your, do you get what i mean even if it's the other yeah, person exactly. who's trying to to make things right you, you still should make an effort as well of course, because I'm young, right? it's us and the relationship there are two of you it's not me alone it's not just you it's us 
and we both need to make an effort to make sure that everything is, is, is moving on. Yeah, and if it's not, you're going to be stewing in negativity and that is such a waste of time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, all I would say is generally, just take advantage of this season. There's so much love in the air. Everybody is doing this promotion or that promotion, this, this event, this, that event. Very few people are having conversations about love. You know, it's not just about Valentine's Day, it's not just about February. It's about you and where you want to go together on this journey. Yeah. You know, if you're a married couple, this journey through life. If you're dating, you're courting, where do you want to go next? Yeah, I mean, conversations are difficult to have anyway, especially when things are awkward. So the fact that it's the season of love, I mean, what better time to be cheesy or what better time to take advantage of of the entire season to put your relationship into perspective and to see exactly where you're going. I totally agree with you. I mean, you shouldn't wait till Valentine's or till February, but you know. You really shouldn't wait. You shouldn't have to, but I mean, seeing as it's here, <laughs> might as well take advantage. So viewers, our two cents. It's Valentine's season, we're in the month of February, there's so much love going around. If you and your partner are having issues, address them. Apologize, MFS says. Apologize first, then have the conversation. If you if you need to have sex to patch it up, do it. Go out. But at the end of the day, make sure that you take advantage of the love season. Don't allow your love to fizzle during the season of love. And of course, if you have comments, you have questions, you'd like our advice on something, you can always reach us um, on Twitter, on Instagram, right here on Facebook. Choice is yours.